another video for you with new stories from Ethiopia. Breaking news is about the formation of a committee uh, by Ethiopian government to start talks with the Tigray government. A seven-member committee has been formed and some guiding principles uh, have also been announced by Ethiopian government today for talks with uh, Tigray regional government. Tigray president a few days ago uh, spoke about red lines uh, uh, in talks with Ethiopian government. Uh, is there a possibility of a common ground between uh, the guiding principles, conditions laid out by Ethiopian government and red lines uh, mentioned by Tigray regional government? And who are the seven members? From which regions are they? A second new story is about Ethiopia-Sudan border tensions yesterday. Sudan accused Ethiopian military of having executed seven Sudanese soldiers and one civilian. We were waiting for official statement uh, from Ethiopian government. Now, Ethiopian uh, Foreign Ministry has released a statement with details of the incident. Where did the incident happen? Who was involved in this incident? Was there fighting between a Sudanese army and Ethiopian army or Sudanese army and Amhara militia? Uh, the statement of uh, Ethiopian Foreign Ministry answers several questions. A third new story is about uh, student protests intensifying in the Amhara region of Ethiopia. We have uh, a report from Debre Birhan University where reportedly federal police is inside the university in the premises of a university. And lastly, we have Dera Vareda on uh, Amhara Oromia border uh, has been the place of uh, tensions. Uh, and the two sides, Oromo Liberation Army and uh, some groups based in the Amhara region are making conflicting claims about fighting in Dera Varda. We'll have a look at claims on both sides so for you. Uh, let's start with breaking news for you, uh, which is about formation of a committee by Ethiopian government for negotiations with Tigray regional government. Now, let's have a look at the background first. We know that uh, last week, uh, PMRB addressed Ethiopian uh, parliament. He announced that uh, the government had formed a committee led by Damake McConnell, Deputy Prime Minister, to study the prospects of talks uh, to resolve conflict in northern Ethiopia, means Tigray conflict. So, the committee was formed, led by a foreign minister, Deputy PM, Damake McConnell. Uh, the committee compiled a report about prospects of talks with uh, uh, Tigray regional government. The report was submitted to Ethiopian federal government. And after that, we saw that first uh, Prosperity Party held a meeting of its executive committee, led by PMRB, participation of executive committee members of PP. PP is ruling party in Ethiopia, uh, in Addis Ababa, and in regions as well, most of the regions. Uh, then, Yesterday, party's central committee started a two-day session. So, party's central and executive, both committees held deliberations, discussions about the report compiled by the Mac and McConnell-led committee. And after deliberations, it has been decided that peace should be given a chance, that formal talks should start. You can say that today Ethiopian government has approved uh, talks formally uh, to end Tigray conflict. 
a seven member committee has been formed who are the seven members and which principles will lead this seven member committee in talks with a tigray uh, authorities uh, seven members firstly damaki mcconnell deputy pm leading uh, the committee secondly tamaskan tirone tamaskan tirone is head of uh, nis national intelligence and security services which is ethiopian intelligence agency he is head of ethiopian intelligence agency thirdly ridwan hussain ridwan hussain is newly appointed national security adviser a few days ago pm abi appointed him national security adviser before that he was working as uh, a minister uh, state minister in a foreign ministry and he replaced gado under gacho fourthly uh, we have uh, gideon timothy who is ethiopian justice minister we have seen in recent days that gideon timothy uh, has been at the forefront briefing uh, eu diplomats about uh, uh, humanitarian situation human rights situation in ethiopia i think he he will work as uh, the person who will stay in touch with uh, national international media uh, and other countries about the progress in talks fifthly uh, we have uh, hassan abdul qadir hassan abdul qadir is uh, a diplomat he is from the amha uh, from a far region of ethiopia reportedly sixthly lieutenant general birhano bakale so ethiopian national defense force uh, has representation as well at this committee that uh, lieutenant general is there and lastly gatacho jamber who is gatacho jamber gatacho jamber is senior leader of amhara prosperity party uh, he has been included because amhara region has very high stakes about these talks amhara region has been saying that uh, volkayet uh, is uh, non negotiable it's part of uh, amhara uh, so we can s- see that uh, amhara region has considerable representation at this committee uh, most of the members uh, are from amhara region now which three principles will lead the talks uh, will lead uh, this this committee to hold talks with a tigray government firstly respect for constitutional order what does it mean it means that nothing will be discussed which is against ethiopian constitution uh, we can Uh, discuss a lot this uh, point uh, according to ethiopian constitution i think uh, referendum can be held by regions for uh, self determination self determination does ethiopian constitution allow regions to raise armies i don't think so uh what does ethiopian constitution say about western tigray is it part of tigray or amhara tigray government is of the position that according to ethiopian constitution tigray uh, western tigray is part of tigray this point uh, can be interpreted differently second point is uh, protection of national interest so nothing will be discussed which is against ethiopian national interest and lastly very important point leading role of african union ethiopian government wants that talks should be led by african union now let's have a look at what tigray said in recent days about talks with uh, ethiopian government uh, we have a two state firstly tigray released uh, an official statement a letter 
which it addressed to uh, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, Kenyan president, uh, uh, to uh, uh, U.S. mediator, U.S. special envoy to the Horn of Africa, Mike Hammer, EU as well, Ulusogoro Masanjo too. Uh, in that letter, Tigray said, that talks should be led by Yehuro Kenyatta, Kenyan president, that talks should be held not in Tanzania, because it was being said, uh, Le Monde uh, published an article that uh, the talks would be held in uh, Tanzania, with African Union uh, leading the talks. But Tigray uh, ruled out talks in Tanzania. Tigray said that talks uh, uh, would be held in Nairobi, Kenya. Yehuro Kenyatta will host the talks. And if talks are held in Kenya with uh, under the auspices of Yehuro Kenyatta, uh, Tigray will send a delegation. In that letter, Tigray raised questions about impartiality of African Union that its uh, top officials sided with Ethiopian government. And Tigray raised questions about impartiality of uh, Olisogono Basanju as well. So Tigray's position is that talks should be held in Nairobi, Kenya, under the auspices of uh, Kenyan president. But Tigray is not saying that African Union should not be part of talks. In the statement, Tigray said that African Union uh, U.S., U.N., U.A.E., Emirates uh, can be partners in talks, but the process should be led by Kenya. If European government says that talks should be led by African Union, then Debrecen and Gabriel Mikhail, Tigray president uh, was interviewed by some journalists, I think, and he appeared on DWTV. And there he elaborated upon five red lines uh, about talks with Ethiopian government. What did he say? The five red lines were, firstly, TDF will not be dismantled. Tigray uh, will never withdraw from its right to hold referendum for self-termination. Thirdly, uh, Tigray states regional sovereignty will be respected and restored, means restoration of pre-war Tigray borders. Fourthly, accountability for war crimes committed in Tigray. Fifthly, uh, compensation for uh, destruction caused by invading forces in Tigray. So these were five red lines uh, mentioned by Debrecen and Gabriel Mikhail in an interview on DWTV. Let's see, we'll have to wait uh, uh, a little. What will Tigray regional government uh, say in response to today's announcement of Ethiopian federal government to form this committee uh, and to lay out three conditions. We'll update you in coming videos. It seems that talks could start in coming days. Whenever talks start, uh, the parties take very strong positions and gradually, gradually uh, they try to find common ground. That is why talks are held. Uh, uh, will Tigray agree to African Union-led talks or not? Or will it insist on Kenya-led process? That remains to be seen. Uh, second new story is about Ethiopia, Sudan, sudden border escalation. Uh, yesterday, Sudan accused Ethiopian military of having executed seven Sudanese soldiers and one civilian. Uh, then Sudan recalled its ambassador to Ethiopia. Sudan announced to lodge a formal complaint with UN Security Council and other institutions against Ethiopian government. 
then Abdul Fatah Al Burhan, Sudanese army chief, uh, arrived in eastern Sudan, uh, and Sudanese army threatened that uh, it would take appropriate measures. So we were waiting for official statement from Ethiopian government. Ethiopian uh, foreign ministry has released a statement. The ministry states that. Uh, the incident on Ethiopia Sudan border happened on the 22nd of June. But the incident uh, occurred within Ethiopian territory. Ethiopia says that Sudanese forces entered Ethiopian territory and Sudanese forces were supported by elements of Tigray People Liberation Fund. TPL fighters, uh, Sudanese uh, regular army units entered uh, Ethiopian territory. Fighting erupted. Some uh, Sudanese soldiers were killed. Ethiopian government is confirming the death of Sudanese soldiers. It says the soldiers were killed in skirmish between Sudanese army and uh, a militia. It means that fighting which happened on the border, uh, Sudan-Ethiopia border, it was between Sudanese army and a militia which would be, I think, Amhara Fano militia. Uh, while Sudan was saying that its uh, troops were uh, executed by Ethiopian army, but the Ethiopian army is distancing itself from this incident. That fighting was between uh, regional militia and Sudanese uh, army. Secondly, the government says that Sudan is involved in misrepresentation of facts. Uh, Sudanese forces violated. Uh, Ethiopian territorial sovereignty and Sudan should de-escalate the situation. This incident was deliberately concocted to uh, undermine brotherly Sudan-Ethiopia relations. So Ethiopia has made its position clear that fighting was uh, inside Ethiopia. Sudanese forces entered Ethiopia. Uh, but Sudanese position is that uh, its soldiers were abducted. They were detained by Ethiopian military and afterwards they were executed. That is why Sudan says that it's a violation of international law, international prisoners law and uh, Sudan would press ahead with uh, retaliation and with formal complaint at UN Security Council against Ethiopian government. Uh, next story is from uh, a university, Debre Birhan University. We know that uh, for the past two days, uh, student protests in the Amhara region of Ethiopia especially have intensified. University students are protesting against Velaga massacre in which uh, hundreds of innocent civilians, Amhara civilians, Muslims, some Oromos were killed. Police is using force. Security uh, agencies are threatening students. They shouldn't be part of these protests. Uh, in the previous video, I shared a statement of uh, a task force comprising four forces. Uh, Intelligence Agency of Ethiopia, ENDF, uh, uh, Cyber Security Agency of Ethiopia and uh, Federal Police. All issued a joint statement uh, telling students not to be part of uh, these protests. But students are protesting. We have seen protests at uh, Volo University, uh, Vuldia University, Debre Birhan University, uh, uh, then uh, Gonda University, Debre Marcos University and Addis Ababa University as well. Now, this new story is from Debre Birhan University. Reportedly, uh, security forces have taken control of the compound of this university. Security forces have been deployed inside the university premises. 
uh, staff members, uh, they are leaving the university, students are also leaving the university because there are serious, uh, there are fears that uh, some serious situation could develop in coming hours. The deployment is obviously to stop students uh, from uh, protests. We could see similar deployments uh, to other universities as well. Uh, will the student bodies continue their protests or will they be forced to uh, stop these demonstrations? That remains to be seen, but reportedly uh, federal police has been deployed to the compound of Debre Birhan University in the Amhara region of Ethiopia. Lastly, viewers, we have a new story from Dera Vareda. The Vareda is on Oromia Mahara border, part of Oromia, uh, and large number of uh, Amhara ethnic group members uh, uh, lives here. And uh, Dera Addis Ababa Road uh, has remained partially closed for months because there is presence of OLA close to these areas, uh, situated to the north of uh, Addis Ababa, Ethiopian capital. Both sides, OLA and uh, some uh, uh, unofficial Amhara news sources, Amharic news sources are making conflicting claims about fighting in Dera. According to Amharic news sources, in the fighting, several OLA fighters have been killed in Dera. OLA has shared some pictures uh, from Dera. OLA says that in Dera Voreda, Rocho Kabele, OLA conducted a security operation and uh, several uh, officials uh, have been arrested. Uh, four security officials, government security officials uh, have been uh, killed and uh, some injured as well, around 30 injured too. Wale has shared these pictures. The pictures show some uh, individuals uh, in the custody of OLA. Some weapons have also been shown by OLA. Some guns can be seen which according to OLA uh, were captured during this operation in Dera Vareda. So conflicting reports, but both reports confirm that uh, uh, there was fighting between OLA and uh, government forces. Uh, maybe uh, Amhara uh, region uh, forces, uh, militia members in Dera Vareda on Amhara Oromia border. Thanks for watching.